So I'm super excited. I found this new resource called Vite. Uh, it's Vite.js, and there's actually a port of it that's called Vite Ruby, which I discovered I, not even a few days ago. And if you've come from the Webpacker side, which is now a default in Rails, um, Vite is kind of an answer to that. Webpacker, it works great for kind of vanilla apps, something new to the game. But as your app grows, Webpacker needs to recompile all the assets and just reload every time. Every time you make a change to JavaScript or CSS, whatever, what anything you're using Webpacker for, over time it just gets a pain. And there's times in apps I've worked on where it takes just literally like three seconds or more to get a page refreshed. And Vite's kind of the answer to that. It uses a new ESM module technology that's basically part of browsers now. And instead of compiling everything, it only does things on demand, which makes development time way faster. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a new template I'm actually creating that is kind of mirroring what I used to do for a kickoff Tailwind template. Um, we're gonna be using similar technology in it, but I wanna walk you through that now. So I'll see you in the video. Okay, so here's the template I created. And if you've known this channel for a little bit, you know I typically use a template called Kickoff Tailwind. And that's just another, it's a Ruby Rails, Ruby on Rails application template that just installs some stuff for you, gets things started fast as opposed to doing it all from the start, like configuring um, device, if you use that gem, uh, friendly ID, sidekick, etc. This sets that up by just basically running a new command, passing in a template, and going to town. So the idea is the same with this template, only we're using a new tech called Vite. Vite.js is kind of a new way to think about front end, and it uses native ESM modules that are part of JavaScript and HTML, and allows you to basically import um, stuff on the fly, do things very quickly, as opposed to bundling assets like Webpack uh, or similar tech that does that, that kind of compilation. Um, the cool thing about Vite is it's basically real time. So when you make a change, only what you're modifying is being changed and it's just very optimized for development. So it's really great for that. Um, so I'm going to be leveraging an actual resource that I, I found, I think from similar folk that work on this um, called Vite Ruby. And it's just another Rails gem that you can install. It kind of gets you going with, uh, with Vite and then um, it sets it all up via TypeScript and just kind of gives you the, the basis to get things rolling. So it's really neat and I'm, I'm pretty excited that this exists. Um, having done applications on the Webpacker side for some time now, as an app grows, like I said in the beginning, um, it just gets very slow and there's got to be a better way in, in that case. And then also Webpacker is just kind of a, a lot to bear. Um, configuring it can be tedious and confusing. Um, and it's just something we, it's like a necessary evil, I guess you could say. Um, on top of that, this, t this kickoff Vite rails is what I'm calling the actual, uh, template, but I'm including a CSS framework called windy CSS, which is essentially a clone of tailwind, but it's optimized for speed and it does a lot of things automatically as opposed to tailwind. If you've ever set up tailwind on your own. It can get tedious as well. Um, this is a pretty quick install, especially if you're using something like Vite. Uh, so you can save it and have these plugins initialized and you just import that main CSS into your main uh, entry point JavaScript file and you're done. You don't have to even install a Tailwind configuration if you don't want to, um, or even uh, set up your imports on the style sheets that you might be used to, like the at Tailwind CSS uh, declarations, if, you're, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's pretty sweet. It also allows you to just do things very like um, speculatively. So you could you like write custom CSS with no avail. So it's, um, where is, there's like a features section where you can actually just do stuff like this, like pair stuff, um, do all these different utility groups and variants on basic breakpoints and hover states, all that stuff. It's just really cool. Like the, look at this crap, like you can do math in line to create a class uh, 2.5 so decimal places and pixels like different units all that stuff and it just works so it's super cool to me um, i haven't battle tested this so i'll preface this all to say that this template i literally wrote 
two days ago, as you can see. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. If you do use this, try to use it uh, with the intention of it being kind of more of a, a hybrid thing, maybe not production worthy yet, but it's pretty close in my opinion. So also one thing to note when you do install it, um, I basically don't want to include Webpack at all. And, and for that matter, no JavaScript. Um, Rails does have some stuff it installs by default when you just do Rails new, which I'll do that in this video just to show you. But the, the general census is I don't want that stuff in this app. So I want to be able to just run, um, where am I at? There's my, my directory at the moment. I would just be able to run the install, but skip the JavaScript and the templates that's actually going to install stuff manually. As you see here, I listed out the packages I actually install um, when it actually boots up. So one thing that's not included here that I noticed is like active uh, action cable. That's something I don't have. You might need to add that if your app uses that some stuff. I don't tend to use action cable, to be honest. Um, it's just something I never really needed. It's pretty neat to use WebSockets, and I think you might need it more for Hotwire if, you're use if you've heard of that. That's kind of the latest thing in the Rails community. But for this template, I'll maybe amend that and change it in the future so it includes it. But that's just all to say. It's not included. So I've got directions here. You basically just clone the, the repo. Um, and then you want to pass in that template from that, that directory. So here's what, if you clone it like this, you'll pass in this template.rb file that's in the folder that you clone. And then you want to new up an app, pass the name of the app, and then those tags to skip the JavaScript. So we'll go ahead and skip it because we're going to install it all manually behind the scenes. Uh, so let's go ahead and just create a sample app. I'll show you by example here. I did already clone this down, so I have the latest changes. I'm going to just paste this command in um, just to show you. So I'll say sample app. I don't know if I have that already or not. I'm going to amend that name just to be uh, for sure. So we'll say demo, something like that. I'll run this, and it should go ahead and queue that up and take a little bit of time, but considerably less can like Vite is quick to install compared to Webpacker. So I won't even speed this up. Cool. So just that already done. So let's CD into the app. I just wanted to give you a little tour of what's going on here and how it works. And then maybe I'll, to I'll uh, tour the template RB file if you want to check that out. The biggest change here is the vite.config.typescript file. So here's going to be what generates from my template when you install it. We're going to import these modules and they're all basic plugins for Vite specifically. And then just kind of like Tailwind, if you're used to defining a Tailwind plugin, it's kind of like that. But of course, this isn't post um, CSS or anything. This is legit JavaScript. So uh, a big difference here, though, if you're used to uh, Ruby on Rails, like the default, they have a JavaScript directory. Um, I went ahead and used the front end directory here. And then in there is the entry points. So this is going to be like if you're used to packed pack entry points, that's what this kind of going to be. Um, in here, there's some commenting that I'm going to just leave in the template if you want to use it. Basically, I've installed the packages that you see commented out if you want to go ahead and make use of those. I don't think I did Turbolinks just because um, you might want to add that. Same with the channel stuff. We can add that later if you really want to. Stimulus is not en enabled by default. And one neat thing about Vite is you can enable, or the Vite Ruby gem is it enables you to use these tildes, which allow you to just assume anything in this front end directory is just going to be imported um, automatically. You don't have to worry about paths and those dot notations like this stuff where it gets hairy, you know. So that's pretty cool, I think. And then because I use um, some custom CSS for component based stuff, uh, we needed to import the windy CSS in a different way. So you can actually do it a lot like you do Tailwind. Um, but you just import it this way. And then you want to add your own custom stuff in between these, the components and the utilities import. So here I've done that. And I went with just traditional CSS because honestly, I'm finding myself needing way less SAS based CSS these days. I don't think it's really necessary with the capabilities Tailwind offers. 
um, as well as a lot of other stuff that you just don't need that much nesting for. Um, traditional CSS can get repetitive and tedious, but it's really not that bad, I think, especially if you're using something like Windy CSS or Tailwind. So that's all to say this is opinionated, so you feel free to change it if you want to. Um, if you wanted to load this as SAS, you would probably want to main make a change here to include uh, a SAS plugin. I think there might be some sort of use case for that in, in Vite. I haven't really researched that, so that's something I'm not sure about. But here we're going through with Windy CSS and basically doing the um, the purge kind of stuff, looking in these files to go ahead and, and do that. And then these are the directories we'll be you know paying attention to. That's Windy CSS is going to be using its stuff for. Check out that that documentation uh, for more details on how to configure that. There's a lot here. Uh, if you want to even use your traditional Tailwind config, you totally can. I just didn't because it's more code to include that I don't really need to. So that's one thing to note. Um, we also have the stimulus hop module reloading. That's part of this. And it, we've imported the controllers here, which is part of stimulus, if you're familiar. In, inside the index file, this is a little different than a typical Rails install. Um, you include a, a Vite helpers for the controllers to work and register them pretty similar to what you nor normally did, but there's this new import meta eager kind of loading thing that, that is kind of a new paradigm that I don't really understand, but it, it works, so that's cool. Um, so all that to say that this is the basic setup, and one thing to note in your application layout file, instead of, actually it would be in this case head, instead of the pack tags, you're gonna have V. JavaScript tags or you know, style sheets. You definitely need the client tag if you want the hot module reloading kind of thing going on. So you need to include these two. Um, there's gonna be comments in here for the app um, if you run it from my template, but you can also check out this repo here to learn more and how to install it all. This is all run automatically when you do use my template. So that's one thing to note. And then to finally kick off the actual app, we can just run Rails server in one uh, window and then bin vite dev in the second. This should boot up a little local host server on 3036 and you'll have this local network. I haven't even actually visited this. It shouldn't be, it's just like a proxy. But if you go to your local host now, you can actually uh, see it in action. One little thing that's kind of nitpicky on my end is just when you do click a button, it has this flash of like it paints the screen with CSS and then doesn't. Um, I'm not sure if that's re relative to Rails or, or Turbolinks not being present or something like that, but I may look into that. For, but for now, it does work. If you're if you're writing custom CSS on the fly, this just updates automatically. So any changes you make are just instant. And I think that's the appeal. Um, coming from Webpack, it was just slow to do something like that. You just sit there, wait for the page to refresh. And this is almost like injecting it so you don't even see the page refresh at all. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And I think that's about it. So why don't I go through the template file real quick and we'll call it. Uh, so on the GitHub repo, um, like I said, I did install like the UJS stuff and active storage stuff. So you just need to import it here. I, you just uncomment this stuff if you really need it. UJS is pretty useful for anything to do with Ajax if you want to do it via Rails or um, if you like delete and have a confirmation window, you might see that pattern in Rails. Um, and you just say like that data confirmed true on a, on a delete button or something. That's what UJS is helping with. So you might want to enable that. I would probably do that. And I might change that just to include it by default, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, the template, let's go through that. Inside of it, um, the beginning here is mostly if you wanted to clone this from the actual uh, master source of the raw template of this file. Um, I'm having some issues with that. It's not quite working great, so I don't include it in the readme, but this will be hopefully figured out soon. So stay tuned for that. But here we're adding our gems. Um, and at the, I should say, these are all methods that we're calling at the very bottom. So there's after, after bundle, when we include all of our gems, we're gonna do these methods and call them all. Um, and here's where they're living. So here we've got our gems. Um, we're configuring and installing device here, and it uses these these nice helpers and commands to do that stuff with 
the templates so you don't have to like literally type these things so normally you would if you're installing device manually but here um, it's just enabling all that and setting up some admin um, migrations so if you want to admin user you can add a boolean and appending that to the user model so here's a uh, has person name gem that i include basically just a little method that includes that so you can um, do a lot of cool things to a basic first name and last name on your uh, user model uh, dhh wrote that one i think i could be wrong then i in the repo i have actual app directory that has some pre-made templates that just save save you some time so i've got some ui built with tailwind basically for uh, the device views so you can customize those um, and then just the general layout of course too so that's why that whole directory gets copied uh, just so it's you don't have to go through an ad every time and then the Vite install this is the big change um, this used to be add tailwind um, and in this case that used to be adding post css um, or actually adding the the tailwind plugins auto prefixer all that stuff this is now running that beat install bundle exec beat install um, you should note that that gem Vite rails needs to be included to run that so make sure I mean, it should if you're using my template, but um, and then we're creating that configuration file that you saw. So this is all that line uh, code. That's all this right here, and it's just injecting it into that file since it gets created when we run this command, and just configuring it. So just after that, we run those um, additional modules that I wanted to load. So all the stimulus-based stuff, TypeScript, uh, that Windy CSS. And then we add Sidekick, pretty straightforward there. Uh, this is depending to the routes, the Sidekick, adding the web instance so we can view it in the browser, and then adding this into the environment uh, configuration. And then from the ID, basically generates a command to uh, run those migrations from the gem after we've already added it. You notice after bundle, so that's gonna be after the gems are installed. And then we just do all that pretty much in order here. So th these methods are calling in line. We create a database, migrate it, and initialize Git. And then we show the success message and stuff like that. So this is a pretty plain Jane template. You could go balls to the wall if you want to add like um, support for auth, OAuth, all that stuff. If you want device to be really customized. Um, sometimes you could add another CS framework if you wanted to, like Bootstrap or something. I, I don't tend to use too much. I like my apps to be ready to roll, but not just so opinionated that I build the same app every time, you know? So it's just one of those things. That's preference. But that was essentially it. I just wanted to walk you through this. Here's this. I have a video overview, which is what we're recording right now um, about it. And I'm really excited about this tech. It's super fast and I think Webpack has basically been the preface, preface to all this. Um, with Vite, you get some of the, the built-ins and the real live um, stuff that's already part of the browser with the ESM modules. Um, so it's pretty neat to see, and we're not using any bundlers, so to speak. So it's, it's pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, so check these frameworks out. Get, get yourself familiar with them. I think they're going to be more of um, the norm pretty soon, if you ask me. I could be wrong, um, but I think it's pretty pretty neat. Um, one thing I should note, there's a, an IntelliSense for the v Windy CSS plugin. I recommend you install that if you're using VS Code. It allows you to just basically have some, some syntax highlighting you're used to with Tailwind in particular. So... This team isn't even part of the Tailwind team, I don't think. So they're basically just taking their work and, and expanding on it, which is pretty neat, but also kind of like, what? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, whatever. I guess you can read more about the story here. Yeah. So anyway, that's it for now. Hopefully you enjoy this. Definitely check out the repo. I'm going to link it in the blog post slash video description so check that out and let me know what you think if you spot any bugs feel free to uh, create an issue and i'll try to maintain this thing all right guys peace